I have to admit that this chair was a challenge. It was literally trash. Wow, this sounds like a challenge theme, you guys. If only anybody had thought about it. Mm, well, actually, somebody did. And the somebody is Jay over the flipping drawers. And this chair is my entry for the It's Literally Trust Challenge. Buckle up as I'm taking you on a bumpy ride while attempting my first full restoration. Have I succeeded? Let's simply find out. I'm saving this chair for my local charity yeah. organization, La Petite Mouse. And if you remember, in September last year, I made over for them uh, a pair of bedside tables that were part of a different challenge. So this is yet another charity collaboration um, with the charity shop. Of course, the star of this restoration is my cat Dante um, and not the chair. The chair is just, you know, the secondary player here. In this video, I'm going to show you several reasons why my project takes such a long time to be completed. Well, here you can see example of one. Dante is super cute and it's super hard for me to just, you know, take him off the project but well we need to get going right the piece is super dusty and i can tell you that it was going to be thrown away as nobody wanted to buy it so that was going to do a dump so i'm the last chance for this chair for its second life some cracks off to dress and the varnish is non-existent as you can see, it's like, oh, so it's not much. All right, this is the biggest problem I have to fix. Um, I have to sort this thing out. And the same thing around here. This is a tiny bit wobbly, but I think it's just screws. As you can't hear me anymore, I'm just mumbling to myself about all the little repairs and things I need to sort out. My biggest concern is the seat joint. Anything else falls into minor repairs. At the beginning, I was a bit worried that I would have to uh, replace uh, the seat. It's because, as you can see, it's curvy here, and that's way beyond my set of skills. But upon further inspection, I decided it was in a pretty good shape, so that was a lot of weight off my chest. This got here super dark. Uh, I get it's rust and changed the color of the wood, so... I'll have to, yes, it's like, anything else you would like to add? Do you agree with me, Salim? Let's wait for the expert opinion. What do you think? Oh, it's like, wow, what expert is working? Let's have a look at ourselves. Okay, the same thing happens here. It's super dark. This is, you can see it, it's uh, varnish is non-existent. Um, here is this crack I need to work on, but as I said before, I think just by disassembling this bit, oh, I doesn't want to focus. Ah, come on, come on. So, any opinion? You want my new project? No? Okay, yeah, I know. You think it's hopeless? Okay. So, um, yeah, I think I will be able to fix it. Plus, there is an ink stain here. 
but maybe some acetone is gonna help me out with that one so yeah so yeah I got myself into a lot of work because these things normally when you paint you just don't really pay that much attention to, to them it's like just put some sealer on it mm, you know a uh, coat of paint and that's sorted uh, well here that's gonna be a thing but I'm positive about it like yes I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it so watch me do it all right so I got myself a few things to work on and let's get into it first of all what I'm going to do is I am going to label each piece uh, here because this is old uh, and it needs to get back as it is so uh, before I start unscrewing them I need to wait them you know, to know what is what and where it goes No, guys, honestly, I'm super excited about this project. Like, really, really, really... Oh, you're excited too? No, they're just fighting. <sighs> okay, so that's number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. And number five. Okay. So... Ah, no, I'm not ready to disassemble just yet. And one more thing, I used uh, to keep um, all my hardware safe. I use empty plastic boxes. This one is butter. So I clean them very well and I reuse them. This is a little bit, you know, my part in trying to be more eco friendly. So yeah. And here we're gonna go to the trash challenge. So let's disassemble this baby. Considering that I'm dealing with rusty screws, that this assembly was going pretty smoothly. Until it wasn't. Of course, life can be easy, can it? So I don't know if you can see it very well here, but this screw just broke half of it is gone okay so this screw is broken but this thing is wiggling pretty a lot so i want to see if i can take it out oh okay so now i need to fill in the hole and i can take this one out okay so that's sorted i need to fill in this hole because it's too big and the next screw I'm gonna put in here it's not gonna hold so let's sort this out one out okay so this part here is swollen and this pushed this part away so I need to angle it sand it, make it fit, and glue it back. Great! Is that him? 
Before I was going to use some oxalic acid to get rid of the dark stains, I decided to sand uh, all the pieces with 80 grit uh, sandpaper to make sure that I had all the varnish off and there is no residue or anything. What surprised me was that against my um, assumption, uh, not all varnish was gone. Uh, of course, the very top part was flaking, but there was still quite a lot of um, left over there. And I had to work quite a bit with my 80 grit sandpaper to get rid of it. Probably you could see here in the video uh, that when I start passing my sander, um, there is this kind of like white coating on the wood. Well that's leftover varnish. The other one, Just slowly, slowly, don't let it break, please don't let it break, don't break, don't break, yep, done, okay. And that was pretty much it that I was able to accomplish that day, firstly, because my sander broke. And secondly, because I had an important workshop to attend to. Yes, this is me and my little project. Whenever I can, I try to upgrade my skills. And this is a little workshop organized by my local hardware store, uh, Brico Fermin. Can you guess what I'm making? As I was already there, I decided to pick up some much needed supplies for my chair that was waiting for me at home. And when you're lucky, you're lucky. My birthday present, although my birthday was in January, couldn't come in a better moment <laughs> but to get this I had to go to Leroy Merlin to pick it up and again as I was already there I had to check out different products and prices dream a little bit about using epoxy at some point <sighs> having a look at what's available, what I could use, what I need. Yeah, I picked some a few things as well there. And guys, this is my favorite section of Le Roi Merlin. Loads of loads of loads of hardware. And you can get super classic ones and everything, but here, this section here with all those super cute knobs it's like ah i'm just itching to just get an idea to be able to buy a few of oh, these two are my favorite i really want to come up with a design of a piece that i could use these two or at least one of them for the project here's something similar in style 
but they're just so 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 pretty so cute so wow that <laughs> i wish i could use them all but anyway i was itching so badly to test my new toy but of course first thing i did after i was back it was just to sit down and finish the sanding Okay, so I've got the second coat on and these bits cleaned out very nicely. There is just still black mark around where the metal ring was, but that's going to be covered by the metal ring, so I'm okay with that. But I still have gold marks like here. When, which oxalic acid didn't cover well it's even a different thing it, it's not that it covered it. it it made it more visible so I've got pieces like here where oxalic acid uh, emphasized not bleached uh, so this is this one there is a little bit here uh, there's a bit more here on the backrest so yeah I'm gonna let all this sit and dry and well now we are off to another step I let the oxalic acid sit and dry then I cleaned everything with a lot of uh, water and I let everything dry overnight and the following day, I started a second round of sanding. Especially that bit that was worrying me a lot. As I was already getting tired of all the hand sanding, I decided to go for all the uh, pending repairs and just call it a day.
As I made too much epoxy, I decided to fill in those cracks with it as well. Uh, I wasn't going to glue them because the cracks were not moving. Uh, whenever I find a crack, I press two pieces of wood to see if the crack is moving or not. If it's stable, uh, then I would just fill it in um, and that's it. If it's moving, well, this is something to uh, address with wood glue. So in this case, I'm just using the extra epoxy um, I had on hand. Since it was already done, I decided to fill in um, all the cracks with it. For example, like this one here on the backrest as well. And what was in store for me the following day? Sanding and sanding and sanding. <laughs> well, but this is this kind of a project where most of the time you just sand it and sand it and sand it and sand it and sand it. And then I am going just to put stain, some top coat and it's going to be done. But yeah, 95% of work is something. Yeah, 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 you are seeing it very, very well. I'm gluing the piece using a piece of grass. The thing is that, well, I wasn't um, doing that in my place and I forgot to bring a little brush to um, be able to spread the glue in all the little nooks and crannies. And well, I had to improvise.
I used a few clumps to stabilize the rim and I let the glue do its magic. The assembly was a piece of cake. I mean, it took me a little bit, but I need to admit that I was super proud of myself how everything turned out. But yeah, um, still we didn't get to staining. My first idea was to give the chair this really nice golden sheen and, and you know, this, this really nice golden color. However, the stain I was using, it was medium oak color, um, wasn't really looking nice on the chair. And I realized that halfway through the project, so I decided to finish staining the chair in that medium oak just to make sure that uh, whatever else I'm going to put on the chair, it's going to look even. And then I started looking through uh, some other stains I had to pick a different color. When the medium oak dried, it looked dirty, so I knew that definitely I need to change the color. Finally, I decided on dark walnut and I gave it two coats, as you can see here. First coat was a bit blotchy. I gave the chair three coats of the top coat. And that was it. Let's have a quick look at how the chair looked before and how it looks now. 